Our second speaker is Kelvin Hopkins MP, who's re-elected last week as the Labour MP for Luton North. <laughs> He's a long-time friend of CND, a personal friend of mine too. He, before he was an MP, he was chair of trade union CND. He was a he cannot run the economic department in uh, unison, if I remember rightly. And he's going to tell us, I hope, a little bit about what Labour's policy in this area is. Over to you, Kelvin. Well, thank you, Carol, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Great pleasure to be here speaking on this platform and to you know, express my total solidarity with what others have been saying today. I have to say I will be deferring to their wisdom and knowledge, which I don't possess, and I come here to learn as much as, 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 much as to speak. Um, it's particularly pleasure to, to be following my good friend and old friend, Andy Blowers, because uh, 44 years ago, I think, Andy, Andy and I were co-authors of Labour's manifesto for the Bedfordshire County Council elections. Um, Andy wrote the environment bits, you'll not be surprised to hear. Um, I wrote some of the other parts, but uh, we've been um, working, you know, in sympathy ever since, and we, to the extent we've even developed the same hairstyle. So, but uh, my background and views, so you've heard Carol talk about that, and I've been a CND supporter for getting up for 60 years. I was on the 1962 Alderman March, um, and uh, I've been consistent in my views ever since. Um, I was a candidate in the 1983 general election, and it was a great shame that because of the the, the, um, the Falklands War, Labour's lead disappeared and we lost that election badly to Margaret Thatcher. Um, had we won that election, I think had, the, had the, that war not happened, we might well have won, and we would have had a Prime Minister in Michael Foote who's committed to getting rid of nuclear weapons and we would have been uh, further ahead than we, perhaps we have been since. Um, but in the 2015 election, uh, the annual general meeting uh, was of a parliamentary CND was held in a very small room in the, in the Commons, and all of a sudden a horde of people turned up, and we, we could, it was standing room only, and it was, of course it was the Scottish National Party, and they've been taking quite a lead in, in anti-nuclear positions ever since. Um, you may disagree on other things, but certainly agree on that. And I spoke in their debates against nuclear weapons some, some months ago, and, and indeed voted with them. Um, uh, this was before Jeremy was elected. Um, but Jeremy was re-elected as chair of, uh, tra tra of parliamentary CND uh, after the 2015 election um, and very quickly whisked away to do another job leading our party. Um, but uh, he hasn't changed his views and nor has John McDonnell. And my, my, my optimism, and I bring a little optimism to the debate today, is that we now have we're into a new era of politics. We've got the two principal leaders of our party, Jeremy and John McDonnell, who are now firmly established as Labour's leadership team uh, after the election. Um, and they are both absolutely committed to abandoning nuclear weapons and getting rid of nuclear power. So we have made some real change. Um, and the real, real possibilities have changed, I think, now, with a, 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 a Labour majority government on the horizon once this dreadful government can, can be forced into, into another election. So I think we have something uh, to be optimistic about. Another factor in all of this, of course, is that we have, my party has gained hundreds of thousands of new members. During the election campaign, we gained 150,000 new members, and since election day, it's getting over 40,000 just since the election day. And most of those people are young, um, the sort of people who would be open to our ideas, the old guard, pro-nuclear uh, reaction, uh, uh, the right-wing reactionaries, I think, you know, they, they, are, they are a fading force, I think, in politics. And the new generation, I like to think, will be much more in tune with our thinking. And they will be concerned about the future, um, having not been brought up in the Cold War, and more concerned about nuclear radiation than, than perhaps older people are. Um, and uh, I think one of the problems we've had is trying to get across the scientific problem of nuclear nuclear power, nuclear weapons, uh, anything to do with, with nuclear fission. The fact that radi radiation is absolutely terrifying. The idea that small particles which you can't see, can't smell, can't taste, can get inside your body and develop cancer and kill you. Um, and that our children are at risk for generations, not just for now, but for generations. 
when people underst really understand that, I think they will see a, a sea change in attitudes, even amongst some of those who support nuclear power. But there, I think, is quite a lot of uh, un lack of understanding. I studied physics to an extent, and my father was a physicist, so I grew up with this. I understood it. But a lot of people um, don't understand that. So I think it's very, very important that we make this case. Um, but going back 37 years, not quite 44 years, but 37 years, I, I was working on pol energy policy at Nalgo, the trade union, which became part of Unison, with a young man called Dave Prentice. Uh, and then we were advocating uh, renewables. Uh, and we visited uh, Mahuntleth in, in Wales, where the Alternative Energy Centre was, and we, we talked about Denorwick uh, energy storage. Um, we talked about solar, wind, wave, and tidal power. Um, 37 years ago, it's taken a long time to get there, but we are, I think, starting to make progress on, uh, in that respect. Had we been like the Danes or others, by now we could have been you know, pretty well uh, sufficient, uh, energy sufficient, especially if we'd used a lot of uh, invest investments in, in um, energy saving as well, particularly insulation of all our buildings. Had we invested like that, we'd now be in a, in, in a very, very strong position, and nuclear would very certainly not be necessary. But um, nuclear power, as we've heard, is not just uh, massively expensive, uh, incredibly dangerous, but it's completely unnecessary. Even now, solar, so the cost of solar are dropping like a stone. Um, if every building, government just said, right, we're going to have every building with solar, uh, we're going to have heavy investment in tidal, which is really coming on stream, to coin a phrase now. Um, and and uh, we, we are really making massive strides. If we just have to put the political will and some resource behind that, we would save vast sums of money, have a much safer world, uh, and be less dependent on, uh, on, on outside organisations, other countries, and so on. So we have made massive advances in 37 years, and there's a real pro prospect of a renewable energy future very soon if we put will into it. Um, uh, there, there is a question of base load we've heard about, and uh, again, uh, uh, that, that problem is, is diminishing rapidly. One of, the problem, one of the advances recently made is domestic storage batteries. In the US, apparently, you know, it is you know, domestic storage batteries. So you can you know, generate, f fill up your battery in the daytime with solar and use it through the evening and night. Um, uh, and uh, that, I think, in the, again, is another, another important uh, argument we must put forward. Um, we energy storage systems, other engine, you know, could jet, large scale energy storage systems are, are, are also uh, being, being developed. Uh, Insulation is absolutely necessary, um, but there's no need for nuclear at all. Uh, and I argue, and have argued, and will argue that it should be abandoned forthwith, and we should start now to 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 uh, to um, de decommission our existing nuclear energy. Uh, one of the problems we have, of course, in politics is that, is that many of our party members are actually working in the industry and, and uh, the unions, by and large, tend to be committed to keeping nuclear because of the jobs. So we have seriously to address that problem. We have to say, well, first of all, just decommissioning what we have now is going to keep m almost everybody who's in, in the industry now employed until retirement. But even going beyond that, we're going to have to have a large numbers of people in, employed as engineers, and technicians uh, and all sorts of workers looking after dealing with energy storage uh, nuclear storage so there are jobs for the future but I think even going beyond that we've got to have as a Labour Party we've got to say to people we're going to put jobs into the Clyde into Barrow and Furnace which will keep your future generations occupied I think we have a, a, a shortage of um, naval vessels uh, we should say, well, we are from now on, we're going to in build more naval vessels, you know, coastal, coastal defence, whatever, um, in those areas. Now, for those people who are perhaps unhappy about any defence expenditure, it might not be appealing. But if we have to have defence, and I think we do have to have some defence, let's make it defensive defence. Let's have, you know, post coastal patrol vessels for all sorts of good reasons. And they could be built at Barrow and Furnace and on the Clyde and keep jobs going for the long-term future. So I think we have to argue this case, not just on moral grounds, not just on air, you know, high in the sky, hopes that somehow the jobs will be saved, actually saying, we are gonna build ships in your ports. Your, you and your children will have jobs for the foreseeable future. They will be 
economically viable and economically successful. So um, I think we have to address these problems politically and make sure we win the argument. The moral argument is, to many of us, is just overpowering. The, even the scientific argument, the dangers are overpowering. But to many, many people, jobs and work are, are absolutely crucial arguments we have to make. Um, polit politics is, as much as anything else, a game of psychology. We have to win arguments psychologically too. I have to say, I spent six weeks on the doorstep campaigning my constituency, did 61 sessions of canvassing, and for the first time for a long time, I actually debated on doorsteps over and over again on all sorts of issues, and I won people over. Because initially, we were doing very badly, and towards the end, we started to really make progress. And the result, we got close to actually winning the election. Uh, and we did that by arguing the case. I think we can make a, a very a winnable case about nuclear power, um, and uh, particularly with the younger generation, particularly with all those young people who've came out to vote for my party, and no doubt for Greens uh, uh, as well. Um, but we, we have to, I think, understand the psychology of elections, understand the psychology of the electorate, and start addressing that, 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 those, that problem. Um, I'm really probably using up my time, but I just go back to where John McDonnell was a few, some time ago. He made a speech saying, in Labour's first 100 days, we would get rid of nuclear weapons and we would abandon nuclear power. Now, John hasn't changed his mind on that, and Jeremy absolutely would agree with everything John has said on that, and so do I. Um, it's a question of winning over the um, Labour Party, winning over the trade unions in particular, to get some change in policy. Um, it's, but during the election campaign, there was a lot of campaigning against Jeremy on the basis that he was, again, known to be against nuclear weapons. Um, and yet it didn't damage him very, very badly. On the doorstep, I had three people raise it. All of those three people were former military people who said, had Labour supporters, but said we're worried because it looks like he's against defence expenditure and not defending our country. I said, no, no, he's against nuclear weapons, not against defence as such. And I think, you know, we made that case and over time we won people over and they voted Labour despite the fact that they didn't, they were worried about uh, uh, Jeremy's views on nuclear weapons. So I think we can win people over, but we have to do that, start doing that now um, and start doing it in a practical way rather than sort of, you know, the becoming a, a, the, the radical fringe. I've always been on the radical fringe, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but we've got to win over the mass of the population as well, those of who, who still have doubts about our position. Um, in Denmark, they've done this. I came back from Denmark yesterday, and in Denmark, thank you, Harold, I'll be with you in a second. Um, I came back from Denmark yesterday. It's remarkable. It's, they, they are so far ahead of us, it's, it's, it's almost unbelievable, but they are completely committed to a non-nuclear future even when they buy electricity, which from time to time they do just occasionally from Sweden, they try to resist having the gener electricity generated from, by, by nuclear. Because even taking in, importing electricity, which has been generated by nuclear, is politically unacceptable. We have to become the mainstream of politics, not the fringe. And I think that's what we've, the, the problem we have to address. I think I'm going to try to be doing that, do, doing that in Parliament. I'm sure Jeremy and John will be doing that, and many others too in Parliament. Um, but we have to win over the trade unions, win over the public, and win over a large number of members of parliament. I'm sure, in fact, even some Tories privately agree with us, but couldn't say so. So we've got a big job to do, but I think we can win it. Thank you. Thank you, Kelvin. It's uh, a particular pleasure to introduce our next speaker, who's an MEP for the southwest of England, because Molly Scott Cato represents the party which I think has done the most to press the issue of nuclear and renewables to the top of the British agenda.